first, what is a digital twin? So in Basis, uh, we talk a lot about the digital twin, but um, basically the term digital twin is quite overloaded. Uh, so um, all in all, um, the digital twin is a virtual representation of an asset during the whole life cycle of an asset or a product in this case. Um, so in uh, this example here, you can use a digital twin for um, various uh, use cases uh, of a product during its whole life cycles. So for example, during development, uh, you can uh, virtually start um, um, prototyping and production planning uh, with a virtual twin before a product is really um, uh, manufactured. During manufacturing, you can use digital twins of the factory and the machines to um, orchestrate production and really um, start implementing use cases uh, for um, creating a lot size one production. Uh, you can use it or the digital twin to display the data on a dashboard, uh, implement quality assurance, and um, also after the um, sales of a product. Um, you can start uh, aggregating data in the virtual, uh, in the digital twin of a product uh, to really um, track some usage data um, to be able to, for example, uh, create a carbon footprint of the um, production of the product um, and really uh, be able to um, access the, um, the data of the digital, uh, digital twin. Um, so these are quite a lot of uh, use cases uh, that you can uh, implement using a digital twin. Um, and uh, most of these uh, uh, are um, just querying data from uh, the digital twin. So basically if uh, you uh, talk about um, getting data from an, uh, an asset to the virtual product and uh, processing it there. You can also talk about the digital shadow. So in the digital shadow, data is just copied from a real asset to its virtual representation. And um, if you really talk about a digital twin, you also uh, mean the data flow back from the digital twin to the real ob object so that you don't just have a copy of the real asset, but also um, have a control flow back. And if you change something in, digital, in the digital twin, uh, then you automatically also get the changes back into reality. Um, so basically that is a digital twin. And this is, um, uh, there are a lot of use cases you can uh, um, you can implement using, using digital twins. Um, but uh, in, basis or basics, we often talk also about uh, not just the digital twin, but also about the asset administration shell. Um, so the asset administration shell basically is a, a digital twin, uh, but in a standardized uh, way. So um, there are, um, if a company claims to have a digital twin, that, uh, that could be implemented in many ways. Um, but uh, with the asset administration shell, you know exactly what you get. So you have a defined meta model and a description of that, uh, the data and operations in the, in the uh, asset administration shell. And um, yeah, you can basically use it as a standardized representation of your digital twin. Um, and um, the main advantage of having such a, a standard is that if you use have an application that wants to uh, use as an administration shell you have your common interface and it's manufacturing independent uh, so the application can really rely on the um, uh, interface to the digital twin to access uh, and manipulate the uh, data and um, services uh, in the assets that are represented and as i uh, I already um, said it in the in the slide before, um, but an um, asset administration shell really can represent any kind of asset. So we are not only talking about products, 
um, but it also it's also possible to represent um, processes, devices, um, possibly also workers. Um, so it's really um, the uh, quite um, can be really uh, broadly used. Um, how does an asset administration shell look like? Um, so basically, in an asset administration shell, uh, you have um, the um, uh, asset administration shell uh, as um, an in or, or you can also talk about an industry 4.0 component. So this is basically the asset administration shell and its physical uh, asset. Um, so um, the asset is basically everything that could be relevant to the uh, to a company and the asset administration shell is its um, virtual representation and both together are the industry for zero component. Um, and within the asset administration shell, you can have uh, different types of sub models um, that are used to represent some aspect of the digital twin or the asset administration shell. Um, so you have one asset administration shell per asset, and then in within the asset administration shell, you could have a sub model for representing um, the dimensions or the documentation of the asset. Or you can could have a sub model um, for accessing the services of a device. Um, or a sub model um, that contains like simulation models of the device uh, that are um, then used for um, virtual engineering. Um, yeah, so that's basically how an asset administration shell is uh, built up. So one uh, physical asset to one asset administration shell to multiple possible sub models uh, that are defined for your use cases and defined for uh, different aspects of the digital twin. Um, and looking at the asset administration shell from a, from a technical point of view, um, the asset administration shell can um, be instantiated in uh, basically three um, types. Um, so if you ask what the asset administration shell actually is from a technical point of view, um, then you can have um, basically the um, first type, the passive file-based asset administration shell. This would basically be just a file, on, on a static file on, on your computer, like a, uh, in the um, case of the asset administration shell, this would be a dot uh, asx file and within this uh, file there is uh, all the static description of the structure of the digital twin and the data and the interfaces um, but the main point here is um, that you don't have dynamic behavior within this file because it's basically just a file you could um, yeah send via mail and uh, it um, does nothing um, during runtime um, so it just contains the serialized asset administration shell and attached files like PDFs or documentation. Uh, then the next type of asset administration shell is a, still a passive uh, asset administration shell, but with API access. Um, so you can take this ASX file and then put it on a server and have an um, defined API for accessing the asset administration shell. So that's basically also other applications can interact with the asset administration shell, uh, ask for properties uh, dynamically, and um, maybe also trigger some uh, operations and services. Um, but here still it's passive in the sense of that the asset administration shell doesn't do anything by itself. So um, the third type of asset administration shell which basically is an outlook. So, so this is, um, I would say, um, still in uh, development um, or discussion. Um, this would be an asset administration shell that really does something by itself. So it would uh, like uh, look actively or talk actively with other asset administration shell to, uh, shells to get uh, a service and uh, really do something on its own. 
Um, so in basics, we mainly uh, talk about the second type of asset administration shell, so a server with an API access. Um, one or two words about some context um, in Germany. So um, asset administration shells are not defined by like Fraunhofer ESE or not defined in the basis project, um, but um, the uh, standards are discussed and uh, uh, implemented or um, uh, specified uh, by the platform industry for zero, um, which is a working group of um, uh, which has been founded in, in 2013 um, by basically by um, by other um, industry uh, organizations like uh, Bitcom, uh, ZVEE, um, and so on. And they have uh, multiple working groups where they um, specify um, all kinds of um, working papers about the asset administration shell. And um, the other main party um, that um, you uh, would like to know for um, the asset administration shell is the uh, Industrial Digital Twin Association. Uh, this has been founded uh, from the platform um, and uh, basically um, is, associated for, uh, is an association for supporting the asset administration shell and also defining um, and organizing um, the sub uh, de uh, definitions of the sub models within the asset administration shell um, so that um, uh, we have a common understanding of what these individual sub models also uh, look like. Um, so the main uh, resources uh, from them um, is uh, details of the asset administration shell part one and part two. So in part one uh, you can find uh, in this document, you can find um, all kinds of information uh, about the uh, meta model. So, how exactly the standard uh, and the structure looks like, and also the serialization formats, and also this uh, ASX exchange format. So, all of this you can find in the details of the asset administration shell part one. Basically, everything about the uh, type one uh, AS. Um, and in the details of the asset administration shell part two, you can find um, information about um, the interface uh, with the API access. Um, so basically um, the standard for um, type uh, two asset administration shells. Um, yeah, so this is uh, uh, the collection of submodel templates for the IDTA. Um, so they have a website, you can also find it here, um, where they already um, collected uh, the, um, some information about uh, submodels uh, that are actively um, in progress and are um, being uh, in development and uh, partly also published. So they have a list of uh, like 30 submodels um, that you can find on their website if you would like to know more about the uh, uh, submodels themselves here. So now I talked a lot about um, digital twins in general and um, asset administration shells in general. Um, so now um, we, uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit more about basis and basics because we're um, are here in a, in a basic uh, quick uh, start guide. Um, so basically, basis uh, is the project um, or the research project in which basics has been created. And basics itself um, is the uh, an industry for zero middleware, where these concept uh, the concept of, for example, the asset administration shell is really implemented in uh, in software. Um, so you can really use BASICs to um, implement use cases with the asset administration shell. And um, uh, this was also one of the main goals of the BASIS project, um, to have a middleware that you can use for uh, implementing industry for zero use cases. Um, and the four 
um, main building blocks, not the only, but uh, four of the main building blocks of Basis um, are digital twins we already talked about. Um, so implementation of the asset administration shell. Um, a registry uh, where asset administration shells uh, are registered in a system and um, which is like a main central access point for finding asset administration shells uh, that are registered in the in the system. Uh, then in Basis, we also have uh, an implementation for a service interface. Um, so as I uh, said earlier, a digital twin is not only getting data from uh, an asset, but also um, uh, um, uh, having, uh, for example, operations uh, that uh, can actively do something. Uh, so in Basis, we have an implementation of uh, control components, which is uh, like the low-level service interface for you can use for low-level service interfaces for uh, devices to really control um, an, uh, uh, a device. And um, last but not least, uh, we also have uh, a, an implementation for end-to-end -end communication, um, which is the virtual automation bus. Um, but uh, yeah, I won't go into detail there. Um, and um, focus more on the asset administration shell here in this quick start guide. Um, BASIX itself um, is um, uh, um, is represented by multiple um, uh, software development kits. Um, so uh, on a GitHub repository, you can find uh, development kits for multiple um, programming languages. Um, so uh, we at Fraunhofer IESE mainly drive the um, Java and C++ uh, um, SDK um, and uh, other partners um, from the uh, Basis project also um, created uh, other SDKs um, that are compatible uh, with each other. Um, so we also have implementation for um, .NET, uh, Python and also um, Rust. Um, I would say the um, main uh, repositories would uh, be the, the Java and, and C Sharp SDK. Um, and uh, depending on your use case, uh, it would make sense uh, to use one or the other. In this quick start guide, uh, we mainly talk about the Java SDK, since this is the one that also the front of ESA um, created and drives. So all the examples here. Um, are with Java, um, but uh, most of them you could also implement with uh, .NET or, or Python. 